is having uh, green juice. I'll tell you that much. I, I'll get to Shahako in a second. But uh, enough about me. So the, the Balatanya is teaching us how to connect to Hashem in a very deep and powerful way. And today, oh, we're Dylan is going to love this stuff. The meditations are going to begin in earnest. Okay? And this is the Tanya that you recommended. Yeah, this is the one that I was talking about. This is a great, great Tanya. They're already up to eight volumes. It's probably going to be nine volumes. The Hebrew is very, very easy. This is highly recommended. This Sefer really opened up the world of Tanya for me. I had my Rebbe and other tzaddikim that I was learning from. This just made it that I could sit at my home, you know, <laughs> late at night and just feel like the Balatanya was whispering in my ears. Who is Balatanya? The Balatanya was the first Chabad Rebbe. Oh, wow. The beginning of all of Chabad Hasidut. And one of the greatest of the students of the Maggid from Mezhbich, who was the student of the Baal Shem Tov. And these were the greats that brought humanity back to life. So, you guys want to be brought back to life? So the Tanya was designed to... Chaim uh, Mason. There's one thing they say to bring the dead back to life, but imagine to bring the living back to life. You know, we're kind of going on zombie mode for the most part. And uh, a lot of it happens just like this, just zombie mode. What are you doing? I don't even know anymore. I'm just... I don't even know. It's called zombie mode. And the Balatanya came to the world to fix that. And he saw deep into the future of how badly we would need this. So the Balatanya is about to give us a very important meditation, reflection, pardon the pun, you'll see how that's relevant in a second, about how to arouse passionate feelings for God. You ready? It's going to take us two days to do this, so I want to jump right in. Says the Balatanya. When a person takes deeply to heart the words of the wisest man who ever lived. Anybody know who that was? Shloy Mahamelech. And the words of King Solomon in the Proverbs. This is Proverbs 27.19. 27.19 from King Solomon. You ready to hear the words of Shloy Mahamelech? Kamai ma'panim la'panim kein leva odom la'odom. Like the way that water reflects the face of a man. Shalom Chevra. Shalom, shalom. Shalom Shalom Rebbe. Great to have you guys. Great to be here. Like the way that water reflects the face of a man, so too is the heart of a man to his fellow. Okay, that's the cryptic words of King Solomon. And now we're going to we're going to unpackage these words. You guys ready for this? Oh, just in time. Alec, we're waiting for you. Okay. Anybody ever looked into a pond? Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me guess. What did you see? Water. Uh, reflection. Oh, on the water. You see your reflection. Oh, Dylan, this is so you right now. When you look at the pond... It's an amazing thing. You see your reflection. You see your reflection in the pond. Just like when a man looks at himself in the pond, and when I say man, I mean woman, I mean human being, doesn't matter, does, I don't mean a man, I mean a person. It could be an animal also, or a plant for that matter. But the animal of the plant is not of the same consciousness that the human does. So we're going to go with human. The way that the human looks inside the water and sees their reflection, so too it is the reflection of one man's heart to another. Perish, says the Balatanya. Like the way that the exact figure, the exact face of you when you look inside the water you see the exact reflection inside the water. In other words, if you're smiling and you look in the water, you give a nice smile. So the water 
image will smile back at you. If you give a scrunched up, grumpy face, what do you think the image of the water will give you back? Scrunched up, grumpy face. The same image. Not even just general image, meaning you are a person, you look in the water, you see a person. No, you see the details of the person. You see the intricate nuances. Whatever you are emitting, you will see that back. That's what you will see back. There will be no deviation from the image that you are projecting into the water. You ready for this? Kacha mamnish. So too it is. Literally. Lev ha'odam anemen ba'avosay le'ish acher. Imagine I myself am a loyal, loving friend to somebody else. So what image am I shining towards that person? Loyal, loving friend. Loyal, loving friend. Hari ha'avazu me'oireris ava belev chavero elov gam kein. As I shine loyal, loving friend towards my friend, what do you think he will shine back towards me? Good one, same friend. It will begin, not only God willing, it's a reality. Ah, now it's happening. He will shine back and it will arouse within him or her that love of loyal, loving friend to shine back towards me. Doesn't the world have an expression like that? When you smile, the whole world smiles at you. Isn't this such a thing? Yeah. Isn't that a song? Where do I know that from? It's just an expression. Just an expression. It's an expression. Frank Sinatra. Oh, it was Frank Sinatra? He, he was the one? Yeah. When you smile, the whole world smiles. That, was that it? Yeah, like that. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Hmm. That's how he sounded? Different key, just like that. A different key, sorry. No, same key. Oh, same key. Thank you. Daniel, mamish. He's a musician, you know, he's, he, he knows. If anybody knows, it's Daniel. So, when you smile, the whole world smiles back at you? Is that what he said? Yeah, yeah. That literally he's quoting the Tanya. He didn't even know Frank, but he's quoting the Tanya, which really he's quoting King Solomon. The Tanya is just explaining King Solomon. When you have loving, loyal friend energy, and you shine that energy towards somebody else, let's take your wife, for example, you shine loving, 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 peaceful, compassionate, excited, deep, moving, love, loyalty towards your wife, it will arouse within her those very same feelings towards you. Because just like the reflection of your face on the water, Whatever you shine towards the water, the water will reflect to you. King Solomon was teaching us a secret. Whatever you yourself start shining out to the world, the world will shine back to you. Which is interesting, because if you see, if a person sees in their life, that they don't know why they've got so many grumpy people around them, and they seem to be a victim of all these grumpy, bad people, and everyone's just grumpy, well, where do you think that's coming from? Maybe they should think about being a lot less grumpy themselves. Because if they would just cheer themselves up and listen to Frank Sinatra, who was quoting the Balatanya, who was quoting King Solomon, then they'd be a lot more happy and have a lot more happy people around them if they would just shine love and goodness and compassion outwards to the world, the reflection they're going to see is of love and compassion and loyalty. Any questions so far before we make a shahakal? So, what about Amen. Amen. Like, there's definitely are exceptions, I would say, like, like cheating, um, betrayal, disloyalty, even when you're loyal, someone can be disloyal to you back. So the question, really, we're going into a very deep psychological... You want to learn psychology? Come to Yeshiva. And you really want to learn advanced psychology? Learn Tanya. The Tanya is teaching us that in a very profound way, 
if something is happening to you, to you, means there's something in your own psychology that has to get fixed. I don't mean that you should be, you know, not cautious if somebody cheats you or double crosses you that you don't do business with them again. But there's something inside of you that must also have something, do I say, a little bit crooked. Because if you're shining into the water, you're going to see the same reflection back. And you're going to track that type of energy towards you. What's this, uh, you know, uh, there was a lot of this, is, it's like 10 years ago, people really getting into manifesting, and what's the secret, all these like new age movies, and what the bleep do we know, quantum physics and all this stuff. It's all from here, it's all from the Torah. What you manifest, what you shine outwards, you're going to start getting back to you. And therefore, if you want to have happier people around you, start shining happiness out. You want to have more love in your life? Start loving more. And you're going to attract more loving people to shine towards you. How do we know this? Kemaim ponim leponim. Just like your face reflected in the water, the water will reflect back exactly the same image to the details. So it is when I show love and loyalty and friendship and compassion to my wife, to somebody that I love, they're going to start shining it back. Very, very important. Any questions so far? Yeah, so far so good. And the Balatanya says, Bifrat kishiroya avas chavere love. Specifically, if the person sees it. Meaning to say, if you show, let's say there's a guy in yeshiva, and let's call him your chavrusa for a second, and you feel like there's like, like beef, I don't mean like, like reserve cut. I mean like, you know what I'm saying? And it's, uh, apparently that's the best place in, in yeah. Manhattan to get something. Oh, yeah. That's what I heard. Yes. They told me. I heard of the Zemachloikis. <laughs> it's either that one. Or Wall Street Grill. She got engaged there? I have to write down the data so people ever ask. You know, rabbis got to know everything. So like, what's the best, I'm in Manhattan, what's the best place? Apparently, you know, getting engaged in Wall Street Grill, it's called. So that one seems to be up there. So, back to us. There's beef between uh, Chavrusas. So you know how to stop the beef? Start shining love towards that person. See all the virtues and the good things about that person. Start thinking about all the virtues. Metaphysically, that person will start to respond back to you in a positive way. And it's specifically if you show them that love. That's obvious. If someone's nice to you, you get this feeling of wanting to be nice back. Authentically nice. Authentic love. There'll be a reciprocation. But even if they never know about it, that's what the Balatanya is adding. Even if they never knew that you start to look at them in a loving, positive way, they're going to start feeling better feelings towards you. Yes, Shane. Um, you said that if, when you give kindness to the world, it manifests, but are there physical signs of that manifestation? But that's besides other people? Or like, what would other signs of that manifestation be? It's showing love. Yeah, showing any type of outward love or even internal love, but the attitude that you shine, lev ha'adam el ha'adam, that the way that your heart shines, the way that your heart feels about another person, that person will start to be aroused, just like the reflection of the water, to express that love to you, start having better feelings about you. The Balatani is quoting a reality. Yeah? What do we have here in our sequence? We have three parts. What are the three elements that are going on inside of this reality, this psychological uh, story that we're building up? We have what's called the Oyev. The Oyev is the lover, the one who's expressing the love. Right? He's person number one. 
Then we have what's called the Nehav. Who's that? The one being loved. The one being loved. Excellent. Then there's one other element. What do we have going on here? The Ava, the love itself. So there's the one who's expressing the love. There's the one that's receiving the love. And there's the love. If the person who is expressing the love is a very big person, let's call him an exalted person, will that have a stronger effect on the Nehav, the one who's being loved? Will he be aroused more so? Mm -hmm. Yes. What if the Nehav is also like a low life? Will that also, if the person's a lower person and he feels like, oh my goodness, he loves me, will that also create more love if the person's a lowly person, yeah. like, I can't believe he's into me. You know, when there, there used to be a band called the Beatles. You heard about them? Girls literally went nuts. They, like, rip out their hair, like, ah! Like, the Beatles! If one of them would, like, look at them, he looked at me, ah! I don't like to pull out your hair just because he looked at you. They literally were going out of their kalim. Like, I'm a nobody. That's the Beatles? And he just looked at me? So if a person's, let's say, on a lower level than the one who's expressing the love, will that also generate more love? Yes. And what if the amount of love expressed is very high? Will that also generate more love? Yeah. Like, a person just looks at you. That's one thing. But imagine the Beatles actually go over to that girl and say to her, do you want to be like backstage in the next concert? She'd probably just collapse, push it. Like, oh my goodness. Talking about not having Kalen. Like, just boom. So, yes, if, you're sure. If the uh, Beatles bring her up, but then is, is she going to get all the same love to other people at that point? She's going to shine she, love back to the Beatles. That's what we're talking about. It's the Beatles, okay. It's, 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 just like the face that shines, the beetles shine love to her. And in that case, the beetles are, let's call them, on a higher level. The oyev is chashiv. I'm using that very loosely, lahavdil, obviously. And the nehav is, on, let's call it a lower level. And let's say the love wasn't just, you know, a look, but actually inviting them to backstage VIP to the show. And then imagine, like, one of them says, do you want to be my girlfriend? <laughs> it's over. Just, yes! Okay, any questions so far? We've got the three dargas here. It's the, it's the opposite, then. It doesn't mean anything. If, it'll be, it'll, it'll be less powerful. A lot less powerful. A lot less powerful. But, if the love is very, very strong, and it continues over a long period of time, authentic love, then even, you know, John Lennon will start to be moved and have a reciprocation of that love back. When a person does something for somebody over and over, and especially if it's outwardly loving, it will generate feelings of love. Kamayim panim lapanim. Just like the reflection in the water is exactly what you're emitting, so too it will be the heart of man to the other will start reflecting back. So far, so good? Yeah? Okay, we're about to take a deep dive. You guys ready? You have your snorkels on? Everyone have this reality very, very clear? This is the way that it is with all people. Even when they're equals. Meaning, it doesn't only exist when it's the Beatles and, you know, this girl, even if they're equal people, so to speak, and they start, one starts showing love, let's call them chevrusas, study partners, one starts showing love, the love gets reciprocated. Now, what if we raise the stakes? We go back to like a Beatles type of situation. Al achas kama vekama, could you imagine? Imelech godl virav mara avasai. Imagine somebody, he's not the Beatles, he's a king. A king, and he's a good king. He's benevolent. And he's godl. Not just a small king, but a king of many, many provinces. 
a benevolent, loving king, like Mashiach. He's going to be the best king ever. Bezrat Hashem, it should come right now. Amen ve Amen. Bezrat Hashem. Oh, <laughs> Zev, you walked in. The perfect moment. Yo, Mashiach. That's what we were saying. You never know, Rabbi Yisrael. You never know. Just remember that. You never know. You never, what do we know? You never know. You never know. Is that Pasha that you never know? What do we know? We do know that Mashiach has all sorts of qualities and he has to be a tzaddik and he has to be a shemaim and he's a human being. It's all, it's delineated. But you know, what do we know? And he has to be from the line, the lineage of David. Really? Yeah. If you skip um, Yer Hashem and just have Ava is that negative? The problem with Ava Hashem without Yer Hashem is, you know, Ava Hashem means like I'm so in love with you. I'm so into you, except when I'm not feeling it. And then what happens? I'm so, a guy says to his girl, his girlfriend, I'm so into you. Like, I'm so into you. And then it was their one year anniversary. And he just forgets it. And he just passes out and goes to bed and doesn't even, she says, what happened? I thought you were so into me. I had a long day. I just, I needed some, you know, I needed to like, uh, you know, just you know, watch some movies and go to bed. I'm sorry. You're so into me. If you were so into me, even the times that you weren't feeling it, you'd be there for me. That's called Yir Shemaim. Yir Shemaim kicks in when you're not always feeling it. That's why Yir Shemaim is always related to being an Evid Hashem, a servant of God. Does a servant serve the master only when he's in the mood? That's the exact opposite of what a servant is. A servant is exactly shows his greatness and servitude when he's not feeling it. That's exactly what it means. That's why, by the way, one of the biggest elements that helped me to learn to do chazara, to review your learning, one of the hardest things, is because once you realize you're an Evid Hashem, and Evid has to do with exactly what he doesn't always like, that's exactly what makes him an Evid Hashem, you start doing more chazara. More types of things that you don't always necessarily want to do, like wake up for shachris, rabotai. Had to put that in there. Let's go! Shachris! 6.30 Rabbi Nachman. It's also a good one. That, one. that one's probably more out of love. That one's probably, that's more out of ava than year. But the year is when you're not always feeling it. What if it's just, I feel like year, at that point, it's still just not enough ava. I feel like there's a point in which you can get to a completely out of Hashem and you don't need any Yerush Hashem and it's not like you just, even those moments don't exist. The Balatanya, the way he describes it is that even within the Ava, there's the year. Is that I love you so much, I don't want to do something that would hurt you. That, that's what I mean. Yeah, but, but that's called the Yerush Hashem inside of Ava. Uh -huh. if, you, if, you're, if your Ava Hashem looks like that, then you're also covered by Yerush Hashem. You could be motivated by Ava, but you've got to have a lot of Ava Hashem to make sure that even when I'm not feeling it, I don't want to do something that will go against you, Hashem, so I'm getting up for shachos. I'm making moves. If I'm tired, I'm still, I'm there. Oh, bro, we forgot to bench. Oh. Hashem understands. I'm sure he's cool with it. I'm a Baal Tshuva, like, I'm sure it's okay. You've had that one before? So if your Avaz Hashem is so strong that it's also bringing you to Yira, then you're in a good shape. So says the Balatanya, back to our king. So imagine you have a king, Mel Melech Godel, not just a regular king, a king over many, many places. Virav, great, powerful. Godel Virav, he, is, he himself is a mighty, noble human being. Benevolent, loving, great. Mara Ava, so imagine now the king starts showing that love to somebody. You have someone way bigger than any beetle, way bigger than anything. The king, the great and noble, beautiful king, a person that's tzaddik. The closest thing we have is like the tzaddik, like Tzimayr, Tzimayr. That's like, those are our kings. And what happens? Hagadol of Atsuma. Not only is he a Melech, Godel Varad, 
that can show normal amounts of love, he's able to show a love that is suma, that his awareness of showing love is so big. Someone who understands love, someone whose love, they're, they, them being tapped into the powers of love is so intense and so awesome. So now we have the oyev, the lover, is a very, the highest you could imagine. And their intensity of love that they can provide is the highest intensity of love that exists. Imagine being loved by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Imagine being loved by Avram Avinu. Imagine getting hugged by Rashi. Okay, we're holding off on a hug from Rashi. We should mamish be zoyche that Rashi should get out, out of the grave. Mamish today with Chiyas and Nason. The Binyan Beis and Migdash from here of Amen. Amen. Kol Tov. Have a wonderful day. Okay, we're holding by Rashi giving us hugs. Okay. Okay, I think I'm going to throw a photo of the book just today.